here with William Browder from Hermitage Capital Management. He's got a very interesting story to tell and he'll tell us why he's here. William, tell your story. Well, um, in, in the past, um, I've come to GAME and I've maybe come for 10 or 12 years um, to raise money, to talk to other investors, talk to um, managers. Uh, but this year I'm here for a, a much more somber reason, which is to uh, tell a story about what happened to us in Russia and particularly what happened to a 37-year-old lawyer who worked for us in Russia. Um, we have, we've had a, uh, uh, a tragic set of consequences which were brought on by being activist investors and being um, challenging corruption in the Russian uh, system. Perhaps you could just give us a bit of background about what you were doing in Russia, what you sure. were investing in and yeah. why you yeah. Of course, the reaction you did. Uh, for t for t about 10 years, I was the largest um, foreign portfolio investor in Russia. We had about $4.5 billion invested in the country. Um, and our strategy was to um, invest in, in uh, underperforming Russian companies. And to help them perform better, um, we would then expose the things they were doing badly. And in, in the case of many of these companies, um, what they were doing wrong was the management were stealing money. And so in companies like Gazprom, uh, the largest gas company, the electricity company, the National Savings Bank, who had people, management, stealing money. And so what we did was we, we embarked on a multi-year name and shame campaign to stop them from doing that, which for many years was very successful from about um, 1999 until 2004. Um, it, had, it had a very big impact as we would research, expose, and then the uh, problems would stop. And as a result, the, the share prices went up, uh, Russia was becoming a better place and, and everybody was feeling good about what I was doing with the exception of one group of people who were the people stealing the money. Yeah, that was must have caused problems. Indeed. And in 2005, um, uh, my uh, visa to enter Russia was revoked. I was declared a, a threat to national security because we were exposing corruption. Um, and then the most horrific part of the story began, which was in 2007, my offices were raided by um, the uh, Moscow police. Um, they came into the offices, took away all of our documents for our investment holding companies. And then the next thing we knew was that we didn't own our companies anymore. The documents had been used to transfer the ownership into the name of a convicted murderer. Um, after that, um, we then discovered that our companies had been sued in court and had lost, even though we had never uh, been allowed to go to court to defend them. Apparently, the people who stole our companies sent lawyers to court who pled guilty and there was a billion dollars of liabilities then attached to our companies. And then the most shocking part of the whole story was that the police who stole our companies then used those liabilities to apply for a $230 million tax refund of taxes that we had paid two years earlier. And the refund was granted in one day. So this is all shocking financial um, maneuverings, but, but the really horrible part of the story and what was what, what, what's um, unbelievably tragic is that and we ended up hiring a number of lawyers to represent us to help us figure out why this was happening and what to do about it. We hired seven lawyers from four different law firms. After we filed criminal complaints about the whole story, the um, uh, police, instead of investigating the, 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 the um, criminals involved in this thing, they opened up criminal cases against all seven of our lawyers from four different law firms. I pleaded with all of them to leave the country. Six of them did. But one young man, uh, an extremely brave and idealistic man named Sergei Magnitsky, um, uh, who was working for us from a law firm called Firestone Duncan, decided he was going to stay in Russia, he wasn't going to be scared away from the country, and he was going to fight the police, and he was going to testify against them in, in, uh, about the crimes that they committed. He um, went uh, to the Russian State Investigative Committee and testified against the police in October of 2008. Um, and one month later, the same officers he testified against arrested him, put him in pretrial detention, and then started to torture him to withdraw his testimony. They tortured him um, in a number of different ways. They put him into cells with eight inmates and four beds so they couldn't sleep. Um, they put him in cells without any window panes, so the open windows in the Moscow winter so everybody was freezing. They put him in cells without any toilet, just a hole in the floor. And eventually, after about six months of this, he started getting sick. He developed pancreatitis and gallstones. Um, he lost 40 pounds. He needed an operation. They refused. Um, and his health then seriously deteriorated. They put him into a, another uh, prison where there was no medical facilities at all. Um, and at the age of 37, on November 16, 2009, he died. And um, so I'm here to tell that story. I think it's important that everybody in the investment world knows that story 
Um, it's not just fun and games. It's not all just about just, um, making money and buying and selling. You know, it's it's there's real a, life. There's a real life story here, impact. and it needs to be told, it needs to be recognized, and that's what I'm doing here. And is there anything that good that can come out of a story like that going forward? Did anything change? Did it? Well, um, indeed, um, by, 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 word, by, by, by telling the story, um, the, the um, president of Russia, Medvedev, had no choice um, after about a week of, of uh, enormous public outcry to launch an investigation. Um, uh, so far, six months later, they haven't charged a single person in the story. However, um, uh, at least the investigation was launched. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, in the West, we're starting to get a lot of um, very, very sort of forceful reaction. The United States... Um, uh, in the United States, Senator Benjamin Cardin, head of the Helsinki Commission, has called for a visa visa sanctions on the 60 police officers involved in this whole um, story. So you're getting a groundswell of support all over the world. In, 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 the, in, in the European Parliament, this, this same initiative is underway. Um, we're working with UK parliamentarians. Um, uh, there's a lot of people that are outraged. Um, Sergei Magnitsky um, shouldn't have died, and mm. um, the Russians shouldn't be allowed to cover it up. And so, by but, telling this story, yes. that, that's that's the way that you end up uh, yes. getting people to uh, uh, to react. Yes. Well, thank you very much for sharing that story with us. This is Bill Browder from Hermitage Capital Management, and thank you for your time. Thank you.